Today, I'm gonna to show you how to test a four pin fuel pump relay using a PC power supply. 480 watt power supply. Doesn't really matter, just need a power supply. It has to be ATX and it can be either a 24 pin or a 20 pin ATX connector. This one actually slides off the end and will convert to a 20 pin ATX for 24 pin board motherboard connectors. It will also attach and become a 24 pin. These three wires are the only wires that matter. You have your ground, your power, and another ground. You can use either of these grounds. It doesn't matter. I think for this demonstration, I'll just be using these two wires. You got your power and your ground. In order for this power supply to work, it has to think that it's connected to a motherboard. Therefore, what we have to do is loop that power back so it receives that ground signal and then it will continue to work and output power to all of these little Mullux connectors, CD connectors, SATA power connectors, etc. So before we begin with that, supplies that you're going to need. Wire stripper. You could also use an X-Acto blade, a razor blade. It's just a strip off jacket from the wire. I use these small little needle nose pliers because they have a really small bend to it and in this application these are actually going to come in really handy because you have to make a really small turns and you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit you need three lengths of jumper wire doesn't matter how long the jumper wire is and that's just for loop backs and then you're also going to need jumper wire these are what I use for my car again the length does not matter but I use these for my car so that I can stretch it out long distances recommend alligator clips I made these myself using over-the-shelf components and these are just crimped on it's just a length of wire running through here that is then crimped on and then you just slide this piece over there as insulation. It only took me $10 to make both of these and I highly recommend that you have some type of large jumper wires, especially for automotive uses. Obviously your relay, your multimeter, the factory manual procedures for testing said relay. We're going to strip a little bit off of this wire here. There. Something like that. Now you're gonna take your pliers and you're gonna fold it over, bend it over into a little hook. Then you're gonna crimp that hook, little V shape. That's actually fine because we are going to be putting this inside of this pin. And you can see how small the female pins are in here. If it's a V, it's actually going to fit in there quite snug. If it was just the regular end of the wire, it would just slide in and out. My gauge wire is not big enough, basically. If you can get thicker gauge wire that will fit right in there without doing this kind of thing, fine, awesome, go for it. In my case, I have to bend the wire over so that I can put it in there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna find this green wire. We're gonna trace that up and that goes into this pin right here. Stuff that down in there. Now we're gonna ground it out and we'll ground it out to this pin here and you do the same on the other side which I've already done there now you have it jumpered now when you turn on your power supply it's actually going to think this is connected to a motherboard and will supply power to all of your peripherals so get your power cord and plug it in first I'll show you that it turns on with this jumpered fan kicks on okay so we're good there. Now you can probe any of these peripheral connectors, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one just for the sake of argument. So we'll find our black wire and that's gonna be our negative. So you just stick your probe right inside of there and we're gonna stick that in. And now we've got 12.2 volts. Just about dead bang on for automotive use. And this thing has line conditioners in here to keep that voltage really nice and steady. It's not going to be a lot of transient voltage with a quality power supply. You don't need to get a power supply that's bronze or silver, gold efficiency rating. You just need a power supply. This power supply is bargain basement, cheap off the back of a truck kind of crap power supply that I bought just for testing. This power supply is so crappy, I would never put this in any of my computers. However, for testing relays and stuff like that, awesome. All right, so we've tested the yellow and black. Now we're gonna show you that the other side, the yellow and the red is going to be five volt. In automotive uses anyway, that's gonna be reference voltage. You can emulate reference voltage on some sensors just with that one. So a Mullix connector for automotive use will handle your power, your ground, your ground for your reference and your reference. So something to think about when you start doing automotive modding. It's the same exact concept as computer 
computer modding. Computer modding community and the automotive modding community are almost hand in hand. If you like computer modding, you're going to like automotive modding and vice versa. And that's something that Eric the Car Guy said a long time ago and it is very, very true. Very true. Computer guys will be able to easily convert over to automotive enthusiasts because it's all 12 volts and 5 volts. It's the same stuff. So now you've seen where the 12 volt line is, where the 5 volt line is, and the grounds for both of them. And that's on a standard PC Molex connector. And once you know this stuff, once you lay the groundwork and lay the basics for knowing how circuits are designed in computers versus how circuits are designed in automotive use, you'll see that they're identical. It's the same stuff. Before I go any further with this, you might be asking yourself why would I go through all this trouble instead of just putting this on my car with a 12 volt battery and then using my jumper leads from my 12 volt battery. Well, let's say it's raining outside and you can't get to your car or you don't feel like taking the battery out of your car. This is a way that you can easily bench test 12 volt applications, 5 volt applications. Without ever having to get in your car, you don't have to keep a fully charged battery inside your house or your garage or wherever you are. Who wants to store a full battery in their house? Not many people. So you can keep this regular computer power supply, which pretty much everyone has in their homes anyway. And it's just unplugged. That's it. That's all you got to do. Just plug it in. Now the power signal that comes in is going to be in the US anyway. 120 20 volt AC. This converts it to 12 volt DC. So everything in a computer is DC. And the same thing as your car. It's DC. Now you might ask, how much does it take to trigger a relay? And the answer is, it depends on the application. For automotive uses, if this is a 12 volt relay, you want to trigger it with 12 volts. Other applications, you might have a 5 volt relay or a 9 volt relay or whatever. 12 volt relay that's triggered with 9 volts isn't going to power up the coil inside of here as effectively as if it were given 12 volts for this to work properly. So keep that in mind that your battery charge does matter when it comes to triggering relays. The whole purpose of this is to show you that you can test all the relays in your car from your bench, from your kitchen table if you want. And also that there is a correlation between the computer industry and the automotive industry. This power supply cost me about $15. How much does a 12 volt battery, automotive battery cost? Probably about $100. You wanna get one of these just for testing purposes? No problem, spend the 15 bucks. Now you have an automotive application testing. You can power lights off of this. Okay, you know those only really old cathode ray tubes that you would have in your cars? This would actually power that as well. So I guess I could try and show you that being powered as well. No, I'm not gonna do that. But take my word for it, it'll power it. Okay, so now that we have these two pins, the next step is to get your two little jumper pins. And you can take any Molex connector that you want. Now Molex connectors have an even larger female hole there. So what I've done in that instance, I folded over my wire three times to give it a little extra thickness. And that actually fits in Molex just fine. Now for the Molex, we're gonna be using the yellow wire as the power wire and the black wire as the ground wire. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this in there. And yes, you obviously want to ensure that these suckers are not going to touch at all, period, ever. <laughs> nope, don't want that. Green on the negative and red on the positive. And you want to lay that somewhere over there on the side where you're not going to touch that or move it. So this area right here is going to be our working space and don't move any of that. All right, here's the tough part. We have pins A, B, C, and D. 12 volt positive on A, negative or ground on B, and then check with our multimeter using continuity on pins C and D. So break out your multimeter, turn it to continuity. I have to hit select on mine in order to change it from diode to continuity. And just to check, it'll beep. We said red is power. Now I don't have it plugged in right now. This is, this is not plugged in. This is all not plugged in. The trickiest part is making sure that these two alligator clips do not touch each other or the pins. That would suck. That's that's not good. You don't want to cause a short. So we're good there. Uh, we have power on A, 
ground on B. Now polarity does not matter, so I can use the black or red leads interchangeably on either C or D. It, it doesn't matter, okay? All that matters is that you're looking for continuity. Plug in our power supply and do not do this on carpet and make sure that you have a fire extinguisher handy the first time you plug this in. There are power supplies out there that if they backfeed, they can catch fire. You do not want to start a fire, especially in your house or your kitchen. So always have a fire extinguisher handy and always have an easy way to unplug. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to my bench power supply and uh, connect it up. Locate the switch and turn the power supply on. And another thing to check, you can just briefly just disconnect either the power or the ground and touch that solenoid pin and you should hear a click. Okay, so now we have our solenoid all wired up. Now all I have to do is touch pins C and D and I should get continuity which is a beep. So this relay is good. And that's all there is to it. Now I have done a relay testing video before, just not with a PC computer power supply. That's, that's basically all I got for you guys. I just thought that was something neat that I could throw together for you guys because it's been a while since I've done a video. If you liked the video, please click like, subscribe, and leave me some comments. I enjoy commentary. Have a good one.